meetings about the development on the Meadows and Buchan Street site. I'm Alex Collis and I'm City Councillor for Kings Hedges and I'm going to be chairing the meeting this evening. Um, if I could ask everyone who isn't speaking to mute unless they are speaking just so we don't get any feedback that would be great thank you. So our aim this evening is to bring residents up to date uh, on where the council is in the development process and most importantly it's a chance for all of you to ask questions. It's your rec and we want to make sure that the project can go ahead with as little disruption as possible um, to your enjoyment of the space. I'm pleased uh, this evening to welcome all of you, uh, representatives of Hill who are building the new development as well. We've got officers here from the council, including Ben Bins, who is going to run us through a presentation on the different phases of the build. And also we have Alison Conda, who's going to present on the new community hub that is going to replace the existing meadow centre. Uh, the presentations are going to take a maximum of 20 minutes altogether, including this bit. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have the opportunity for questions. Um, we want the main focus of the session to be on answering all those important questions that you or the local community have about the development. So we'll have about another 40 minutes of Q&A and then we'll finish promptly at seven o'clock. We've had five questions, I think, submitted in advance of tonight's meeting um, and we have the answers to those already. So when we get to the Q&A, we are going to read those questions out. I think Ben's going to do that so everyone can hear them. And um, we will then also read out the answer as well. Once we've got through those pre-submitted questions, we're going to be able to open up the floor to further questions, which is where you come in. When you want to ask a question, if you can type any questions that you have in the Q&A tab, which is the bottom right hand um, on, the, on the bottom of your screen, and we're gonna take those in order. I will read the questions out and then um, officers are going to answer those live if they can. Um, if we need further information, we will get that to you after the meeting. Then um, once the question has been answered, it will get moved into the answer tab on the Q&A section. Um, if you could be as concise as possible in asking your question, uh, we'd really appreciate it because that will mean we can get through as many um, as possible and as many possible people as possible can have an input into the meeting. We're gonna have all the questions and answers and also the presentation. Um, those will be on the website after the meeting. And you can also submit further questions until this Friday. So that's the 29th of January at five o'clock. Um, we are going to repeat the uh, information on how you can do that at the end of the session as well. So don't worry if you don't manage to get that down now. We're going to have our next residence engagement meeting at the end of June this year. And we're going to avoid half term for obvious reasons. And lastly, before I hand over, I should just remind you that this meeting's being recorded and that that recording will also be available on the website. So I'm going to hand over now to Ben and he's going to take you through the phases of the development. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, if officers can let me know or chair can let me know if there's any problem with my voice or um, picture. So hopefully you can see that in front of you, uh, this site plan of the meadows. Um, the key point I'm trying to get across here is that 92% of the open space is retained. Um, the community hub, which is uh, this area here, hopefully you can see my cursor, that's the community hub. That is a BRIAM excellent, which means it's in the top 10% of sustainable buildings in the world, according to the uh, people who run 
BRIAM assessment. Um, the housing is also low carbon as well, and there are 78 flats, which you can see in three blocks here. Uh, and then in the open space, we've made a number of enhancements, including a new mugger, which will be used for basketball, uh, football and, and, and netball and so on. We've got a new skate park. Uh, that will be constructed, a small park that will be enclosed to keep dogs out, a larger park here, which is more like an adventure playground type um, of park, and a new football pitch will be relayed with drainage, uh, making it one of the state-of-the-art football pitches in the, in the local area. And you'll see there's other elements to the open space, including a new sort of path around the area and uh, enhanced biodiversity uh, in the woodland area. So uh, that's that's a very exciting prospect. Um, we've also got a new development at Buchan Street. Um, very quickly we've got uh, 28 flats and two commercial units. So the commercial units are on the ground floor in this block. We've got a smaller one and a larger one. This will be suitable for a cafe and a shop. We've got a plaza, which will be very nice for a cafe area, uh, if, if suitable for a cafe business. We've got green open space enhancement here, as well as uh, 20, um, forgot my car parking, I think it's uh, 28 car park spaces as well. Um, that's a very quick summary. Uh, nothing has changed since planning. You may have seen this in the, um, the public consultation as well. So what I want to talk through is some of the phasing, because this is some of the key questions that people will want to understand. What happens now What when we go on site? Um, so in terms of early works, the first thing that will start uh, from February this year is the construction of uh, this car park uh, in a temporary way. And that has to be built because we're going to close the current car park, which will be over here uh, where, where it is currently situated. So that's the first thing that will be undertaken. Um, and the reason for that is the community centre car park, when that's shut, the community centre users and uh, workers will need somewhere to park and that will be just for community centre users. I'm going to go into a bit more detail in what that means in terms of traffic and, and um, how people access that. Um, the second stage is the hoarding. You'll see a red line hoarding there and that from spring 21 to autumn 22 will be the hoarding line and that's when the new community centre will be built along with Block C, which is this block here, car park, a new road entrance, and the small park and mugger will be built during that period. You will notice when that is being built here, the current community centre remains here, and all this open space is still available for the public. That will not be closed, apart from when the football pitch is relayed, and I'll explain when that will happen. Um, when phase uh, one is complete, uh, phase two will then be hoarded up and the demolition of the community centre will begin and that will be hoarded from autumn 22 to summer 2024. Now at that point this mugger and this park will then be available for the public as well as this car park for the community centre and the community centre will also be open. Um, now, throughout that period, I, hopefully you can see all of this, but throughout that period, the open space, the majority of the open space will remain open. Now, the first part of the open space that will be um, enhanced is the football pitch, which we're um, in liaising with the football clubs we're looking at between uh, spring 21 to summer 21. So that will be out of action for a short period of time while we put in drainage. Um, and then the next period uh, where the open space will be enhanced is this, this area here. Um, and this is where you've got the small playground. Now what will happen is that small playground will be moved into what we're calling the woodland area, the triangle just down here, while construction will go on. So when that is being enhanced, you'll have this area, this, the mugger and the park, the football pitch in this woodland area with the moved small play area available for the public. Now when that is complete, 
the construction will then focus on the woodland area and enhancements that go with that. And when that happens, this area will be available along with the mugger and the small play area and the football pitch. So throughout that period, most of the open space will be available during construction. Um, just a little bit more detail on the car parking uh, situation with the community centre. This is this community centre as it stands at the moment. We will build the car park um, first. Uh, and when that has been built, this car park will close. So the entrance to that car park will, will be off Daisy Close. Um, and this car park will then be hoarded off, as you can see in this red area here. And that will only be used uh, for construction and for construction car parking at that time. So there will be a change there for residents. When it opens up, after all the construction is finished, you will see three new car parks. Um, there will be a barrier system in place for the community centre car park, which will mean only users and workers for the community centre will be allowed to use that. Um, this will go on the website. I'm not intending to talk all through this, but I just want to point out yet again the open space um, that is available and when it's not available. So the football pitch will be out of action between spring and summer 2021, hopefully coinciding with the new season. So the new season is starting in September 21. There'll be a brand new football pitch. Um, the current skate ramp will go in spring 21. Um, um, but you will see, obviously, step by step, the open space and the um, play areas in the Mugger will gradually come into um, being available for the public. Um, the other big change, I guess, just to note, is the current small play area will be relocated to the Woodland Walk area in winter 23. But again, you'll have a bit more time to look at that on the website. We'll, we'll keep that up for you. This is a really important point here. Um, construction does come with inconveniences now and again. We do do our best to reduce that from a council perspective, from a hill perspective, and um, they have got very good, uh, and so has the council got very good uh, record in um, responding to any concerns. So if you've got any concerns day-to-day -day wise uh, in relation to the site, you've got a an email here, resident at hill.co.uk and a telephone number um, that is manned 24 hours. So that could be from anything uh, to uh, minor inconveniences or there's a concern of security, whatever it may be, you can contact that number. Hill are part of Considerate Constructors, uh, which is a Cambridge Council focus, which is uh, encouraging contractors and constructors to be um, responsive to community needs and Nick Milne is the person to contact there if there's any concern that that isn't being followed uh, and Nick is very quick to respond to that. I should just say if you do contact resident at Hill it is tracked and that does come back to us at the council as well as Hill so we do know whether people do get responded to and then more broadly we've got Jake Smith who is um, the the point of contact from the council uh, on anything related to the construction site um, and that development you've got three contacts there um, that if you have the need to contact us, we will respond as quick and as effectively as we can. So that's a bit of a whirlwind tour there of what's going on site. I'm sure there'll be more questions there, but I'm going to hand over now to um, Alison regarding the community hub. Thanks, Ben. I hope everybody can hear me OK. Uh, my name's Alison Conda. I work for the community services team at Cambridge City Council. And I've been working with the community um, to shape the design of the new community hub building, um, which is going to be part of this scheme. So taking us back a couple of steps, in 2017, we, uh, the Cambridge City Council began a strategic review of all, its, all of its community buildings across the city to identify ones that um, where there might be over provision or under provision in current facilities. Um, and also where there might be some opportunities to improve access for those who need better access to services um, the most um, at the local level. Um, following that, that of the review and public consultation on the review findings, um, 
we uh, the city council approved um, a, a community facilities strategy in 2019 um, and within that includes some key actions for implementing the findings from the strategic review of community provision for the meadows and buckham street um, the recommendation within that strategy um, was that the evidence base showed and confirmed a need to, for the council and community to retain just one community centre in this location. Um, and work then began to assess what the space, what space one centre would need to provide to meet the priority uses for the community in the area. Um, and whether there was also a business case um, for the surplus land to be put to any other uses, any other priorities for the community in the area. Um, the scheme that proved to be both viable um, and that now has planning approval. Um, if you could, um, if you could move on, sorry, Ben, the next slide. Sorry. Yep. Um, the scheme that proved to be viable and which achieved planning approval this year includes um, a new two-storey community hub building, um, which will be built on the site of the old Meadows Community Centre. Um, as Ben has said already, the work will begin very soon to build the new temporary car park for that new hub, um, and that will have 40 spaces available um, for existing users of the Meadow Community Centre. Once the car park is ready, the existing car park will then close, and work will begin um, to build the new community hub, two-storey community hub building on the site of the old Meadows Centre car park. Um, by doing it this way, it means that the City Council um, can keep both existing community centres open, both the Meadows and Buckham Street, um, until the new two-storey hub building is actually ready to move into. Um, and that should mean basically there's no community for any of the existing community groups who use those two centres. If you can move on, Ben, please. The new hub will be a fantastic um, and a significant investment in a brand new larger two-storey community centre building to serve this northern area of, of Cambridge City. Um, it will be fully accessible um, and we have consulted with key user groups who have some specialist needs from a community building um, to, to make sure that they've been consulted and have input fully into the design and shaping the design around their specialist needs. Um, there'll be a brand new ground floor community cafe that's going to become very much the focus for this building on the ground floor. And it will provide um, an important space for the community to meet socially and informally, uh, which has been something that all of us I know have been missing during during the current COVID pandemic time that we've been um, experiencing. Um, the new hub will also be kitted out to ensure it can provide community arts, events and theatre activities um, in the large upstairs hall space, something which can't happen at the current community centre. Um, it's also been carefully designed to ensure better integration between um, St Albans Recreation as a fantastic green space which is going to surround um, an enhanced green space surrounding the new hub um, and also better integration between the play and sports facilities and that green space. There'll be a new permanent car park which Ben has mentioned which will have 40 spaces and it will be managed with a barrier and enforcement to make sure those spaces um, are prioritised for users of the new hub building. Um, and if we can just move on to the layout slides, then on the ground floor, um, which is the, the top layout, this shows that the area will include um, the new cafe that I've already mentioned on the top left-hand side that links very much to an outside terrace area and the green space um, and play facilities and sports facilities with the mugger and the skate ramp as well. Um, a space for the children and family service activities um, to take place, a hall for young people's activities um, and recording and wrapping services within those within that space as well. Uh, and also it's going to be kitted out so it can be used for exercise and rehab rehabilitation classes to take place on the ground floor. This area also includes the key staff areas and two changing rooms that will serve the, the football pitches, which can be accessed from the outside um, as well. So the centre doesn't need to be open for the football teams to have access to the changing, to the changing rooms. Moving to the lower layout, the upstairs, the first floor is um, going to be where the large sports hall is for, um, will be marked out for sort of badminton activities. But it's also going to be a multi-purpose space, this hall for community arts events and theatre to take place within it. Um, and most of the meeting rooms are also located on this upstairs floor, 
and these can be subdivided and opened up um, to be used with the hall for large kind of conferences and events and community activities as well. This floor also has the first floor nursery space within it with a, with a large outdoor roof terrace garden that will serve the nursery and they'll have their own bespoke um, safeguarded entrance and access up um, to the nursery space as well. So that, that's the last of um, the slides that I wanted to present, so thank you. Thank you very much, um, both of you. I'm going to hand back to Ben now, um, who's going to go through the five pre-submitted questions that we've had. Thanks, Ben. OK, so uh, the first question was from Ms B, uh, and um, the essence of the question is what's going to happen to the shop and cafe uh, while construction uh, goes on and um, when construction is finished, what then happens? So we are looking into temporary accommodation for both the cafe and shop. Um, there's a number of considerations we've got to look at as to where that, that might be, but that is actively being looked at as, as, as we speak. Um, remember, Buchan is a few years ahead, so we do have time for that. Um, when construction is finished, there will be two new commercial spaces which will be suitable for a cafe, so more or less the same size, a little bit bigger than what the cafe is at the moment, and a shop, which again is a little bit bigger than what the shop is at the moment, but obviously more modern design and um, better storage and bin facilities uh, with that. So I hope that answers that question. Um, the second question from Mr. H, what provision has been made for parking for the new houses? I've assumed this is for Buchan simply because the, um, the last question relates to Buchan. Is there a plan to relocate the trees and will both the shop and cafe be retained? So on Buchan Street, there are 24 car park spaces uh, of which two are disabled. Um, some trees will be removed, um, but most will remain. Uh, that was certainly the feedback at the consultation and additional trees will be planted. Um, and as we've said in the previous question, both the shop and cafe um, space will be available for a shop and cafe. Um, as we've said before. Now, if there is, if it is for meadows and um, the question on trees on parking for the meadows, we can put that up as well. That's not a problem, but I've assumed that's for Buchan for now. Um, the third question from Mrs. K about the green space. Um, so we've, we've just summarized what the, uh, it was more of a statement that came through, but we've assumed that's a question about the amount of green space, which we reiterate 92% of green space will be retained. And during construction, we've hoped we've shown you that the majority of the space will be available for the public during, during the construction period. Um, Ms. Ms. C, this is about uh, a question about taking away more land and widening Daisy Close. So um, we only have planning for permission for what you have seen. So everything we've shown today is what we intend on doing. Uh, and there is no plans to do anything other than that, that, that we've been given permission for. Um, so I hope that answered that question. In terms of Daisy Close, the actual road itself uh, is controlled and owned by highways at County. Um, so what we've asked for is permission to extend it into the site, so that into the car park. So that's all we've asked to do. So anything that's actually on Daisy Close and is talk of it, some bricks being on Daisy close that is not something we will touch unless highways ask us to but at the moment they've not asked us to do that so all we're doing is extending it into the site um another question from ms g about the clarification and consultation so clarification on the the space so uh, just reiterate planning permission has been granted on the designs that you have seen um, that retains 92% of the open space. So that is what we have to do. That is all we are allowed to do. And that's what we intend to do. Um, in terms of continuing communication, I hope you see that we, um, we've had to do it online because of COVID, but we do plan another one in June if we can do that physically and meet in a safe way. And hopefully this dreaded virus is over, then we will do that. But we will plan for both 
physical and online for June, and we'll have to see where where we are in terms of the pandemic. Um, and we plan to do that two a year. That seems to work quite well on other sites. Um, there will be monthly newsletters and they get posted into the immediate streets nearby. So it's not the full distribution uh, of 4,000 households. It's, it's literally the nearby streets, which is the standard procedure that we've done on all our sites. Um, but we do put the newsletter on notice boards and in the community centre, and we try and make them as widely available um, to, to, to see on that. So if you do have a question or do have a concern or you want to know what's going on, we will post them uh in, in on the notice boards um around that so any any feedback on where the notice boards will be most useful will be gladly received um and in terms of then how do you get involved in the improvements in the open space that has already started on the skate park we have liaised with camscape which is a, a local uh pressure group for making sure that skate facilities are suitable for all ages uh, in Cambridge and they've already had input in the design of the skate park and there will be further opportunities for the public to look at what we're proposing in terms of the landscaping the meadows and things like that um, that's to come so we haven't got fixed dates for that but uh, that that is something we envisage on bringing back to the next meeting or the meeting after Thank you very much for that, Ben. Um, we've now got just over half an hour, I think, um, for questions from the floor. And I think we have seven or eight already typed in the Q&A. Um, I'm gonna take these one by one. And as I said earlier, I'll read them out and officers will answer them now where they can. Um, just to remind you, if it's a question that has already been fully answered, we'll probably move on to the next question. Um, and we will give you the information about where you can submit additional questions at, or, you know, if you need any clarification at the end of the meeting. So our first question is, what will be included in the community hub? I think Alison has touched on some of that. Um, and how can we make suggestions? I think that's probably one for you, Alison. Yeah, so um, I've, I've kind of given an overview of what will be, what sort of facilities there are going to be on the, on the ground floor of the new community hub building and also the first floor. Um, and one thing I need to sort of reiterate or emphasise really is that we're not designing any areas of this new community hub building to be bespoke areas for any particular activity, um, apart from probably the cafe space. Um, every part of this building is going to be what we call a multi-purpose um, space, so it can be used for any kind of activity. Um, so all of the meeting rooms and both halls will be designed in such a way that a lot of the, the um, particular requirements of groups can be taken away so that another group can use it for another purpose. Um, so it's going to work very hard. Every inch of this building is going to work very hard for the community moving forward. Um, so the sports hall upstairs on the first floor will also be the, the arts event and theatre space. So there'll be a lighting bar and acoustic provision in there for that, in addition to being able to be used for, um, marked out for a badminton court. And it could also be used for, for conference facility as well. So I hope that gives you an idea that, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure it's a very, a very flexible space um, and it can remain um, fit for the future as community needs change as well so that there aren't sort of bespoke requirements that need to be redeveloped in this new building. Um, so I hope that helps Amy to answer the question. We've done a lot of consultation on the community needs um, that need to be included within this facility um, with existing user groups at both Buckham Street um, and the Meadows um, and really tried to listen to the, the sort of priority uses that the community want to, to use this build, new building for. Um, so the design of this building is at quite an advanced stage now because we're about to start work on, on the development. Um, so I'm hoping, Amy, that you participated in some of the sort of consultation events um, and contributed to those in the lead up um, as part of the design process already. But now the, the footprint and the sort of specification for the building is, is, has had to be defined ready for the development work to start. That's great. I don't know if you want to add anything 
Uh, no, I think you've answered that very comprehensively. Okay. Um, Jake, can I just double check? We're okay to move on to the next question? Yes, fine. Lovely, thanks. Um, so the next question is, will you include any nature spaces? I know we have touched on this already a little bit, perhaps Ben, you could say a little bit more about the detail? Yes, so um, th there's a number of different ways of answering this, but because the community centre um, has to achieve what's called BRIAM excellent, it has to demonstrate um, a positive impact on biodiversity and so do the apartments as well so there'll be things like uh, bird boxes and insect hotels that sort of thing that are part and parcel of developments these days so you've got that side of it you also have uh, green roofs as well which will be part of the development um, which uh, enhance the biodiversity of the development um, now in terms of nature spaces you can go in um, in particular the the uh, woodland walk area where there is a bit, bit of biodiversity there and other areas around that there is a plan to increase that with meadow and wildflowers and so on that go go with that so um, we have done a calculation of the biodiversity as it is and we've done a calculation of what we propose to do and that shows a significant increase in biodiversity whether that's plant or uh, animal life or insect life and so on so hopefully that answers that question that there, there are other there might be specific questions you may want to follow up with um, which I'm happy to answer um, whether that's later on uh, in the week or we'll put on the website okay that's great thank you Ben um, the next question is about accessibility now we have Alison has talked about um, the hub being fully accessible. Um, but the second part of the question is about involvement of people with disabilities. Alison, is there any more you can say about which groups um, have been consulted and whether that's going to be an ongoing process? Yes, we've been, we've, um, been particularly careful to make sure that um, users of the community hub who have particular um, facilities and needs um, to, to enable them to use the building um, have been consulted through this process um, in a lot more detail um, around their requirements. So, for example, we've consulted with the MS group that currently use the Meadows Community Centre um, about their specific requirements, any issues they have using the current centre um, and how we can best facilitate their, their group's needs. Um, so, and we've also consulted with all the NHS cardiac groups who currently use Buchan Street um, and any of the sort of wheelchair user groups who currently have activities at, at, um, and the, med at the Meadows or any other um, disability or access requirement needs. Um, so, yes, yeah, so specific user groups who've got particular needs have all been consulted in, as part of the detailed design process. Thank you. I am just going to, we'll get to Jane's question in a moment. I'm just going to skip to the next one because it, it, it relates directly um, to the previous question. Will the hub include changing spaces for people with complex disabilities to get freshened up, etc? Yes, there is planned to include a changing spaces facility within the new Meadows hub building on the ground floor. Um, we're just working with the architects at the moment to, to, to work out how we can best configure that space from an access, accessibility point of view. But yes, it will be included. That is great, thank you. Um, we've got a question now about the arts activities. Will the community hub have rooms that are suitable for visual arts activities, such as painting, printmaking, and other messy activities with sinks and cleanable surfaces? Yes, there will be. So for example, within the children and family area, um, there are sinks and sort of areas that can be used for creative activity within there because that will also be done by the children and family services. Um, so when, when those facilities become available for hire, they'll be able to be used by any art group that wants to, to undertake that kind of um, more hands-on type activity, arts and cultural activity. That's great, thank you. Um, Another question about the community hub, about bookings. How are bookings going to be prioritised in the multi-purpose spaces? What level will the higher charges be? 
Um, this um, person asking the question is particularly um, pointing out that Buchan Street used to be much cheaper to hire than the Meadows. I'm going to hand over to Jackie at the moment because she manages the current um, Meadows Community Centre building. I hope that's OK, Jackie, um, to talk about how you sort of programme in the bookings for a, a building like this, if you're still with us, Jackie. Yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully um, you can see and hear me now. I think what will happen with the, the bookings as we move forward is we will obviously look at the programmes from the two centres that um, and the, the priority use at both Button Street and the Meadows and start firming up conversations with those groups in relation to the levels of use going forward. So we will start obviously with existing users, but we're very, very mindful that this is going to be a new development, there's going to be emerging needs. And I think as Alison said earlier, it's really important that this we maintain flexible spaces that can respond to the needs of the area. So I think we haven't started looking at the detail of higher charges at this point in time. But what we do um, as a service is when we are setting our higher charges, we look at the community centres that we, we manage in, uh, across the city and try and have comparable rates for spaces for similar types of activities. So we will continue to do that, look around, you know, what the, the local area, the, the costs of rooms, and look at what is happening in other, other centres. So this is a piece of work that obviously we will start to drill down on now, um, but um, uh, initially we've been focusing on, on the actual design stages, and now we will start to move into more of the operational planning. But obviously happy to have wider conversations with people. You know, Jane, I know you, we can, we can catch up and anybody else around this at another time when we start looking into this in a bit more detail happy to do that that's great thanks jackie um the next question is about car parking now we've we've already said that there will be i think it was 40 spaces um at the new community right. hub um and can we just i think we'll take the second part of the question um if several rooms and the cafe are in use at the same time how will spaces be allocated Shall I come in there, Jack, uh, Alison? Do you or do you want to yeah. answer that? Yeah. So, yeah. So um, we we I mean, forty spaces, and if all rooms are in use, requires management of the car park space, like any car park. So we are liaising with communities teams on how to manage that process. Um, we've already mentioned that there will be a barrier system in place, uh, and of course, people will come and go. Uh, throughout, um, depending on when their their uh, room is being used and and so on and so forth. So it needs quite a sophisticated approach to that. So that's that's what we're working on right now with the communities team on that. So there's no specific answer to that, but it it will be a car park with a barrier system. Thank you for that, Ben. Um, this one's also for you. Okay. Why why does Block C have to be six stories? My main problem with this development is that Block C will be a horrendous eyesore, completely out of character and dominating the surroundings. Yes, um, so when we present plans, they have to go to the um, the planning authority and the urban um, designer at the planning authority has to take a view on whether this is out of character or not. Um, and in their view, uh, which they put in the report, they felt it wouldn't be out of character and was in keeping in line with the other uh, block, I believe, uh, a bit further up at Orchard Park. So um, th th that's, that's a, a position they, they've taken. Um, what I would say is there is, as well as uh, a climate emergency there's a housing emergency so we're under real pressure to try and build as many houses and flats as we can so um that's that's what was proposed and that's what the planning authority believe is is acceptable okay thank you for that ben i'm just going to skip down to two questions from helen and um, i can see that the clock um for her isn't quite working and i know these have these were submitted fairly early on um they are about the green space. 
will the first one is will we be able to walk around the perimeter of the football pitch whilst it's being constructed so i think um if i get that right helen that is it, during the 16 weeks when it is um hoarded off to um improve the drainage yes so i think the answer is yes we i'm probably going to bring in ian here from hill uh just to confirm that but I, one would expect you can because by that time the community center will be either completed and handed over or just about to be handed over but i will just clarify and is that correct or have i got that wrong yeah uh, um i think you're right i think there'll be a, an area hoarded off for the drainage and improvement works but the it will be uh, contained around the football pitch area so that you'll be able to walk around it during that period yeah great okay Brilliant. i hope that answered that question i think so thank you both um and helen's second question can we improve the hedging surrounding the whole of the wreck during the improvements um well if i if i answer that i mean we we've got a come up with some landscaping proposals that the planning authorities will accept. Um, so, you know, that's that's underway now. We've got a set of proposals we'll put in the planning, um, the planning uh, submission. Now, um, some of that will be uh, enhancing what's already there. Some of that will be new. There'll be a lot of new trees. So um, I'm not sure the specific uh, improvements to the hedging um, in terms of what we're doing but what we can do is come back and show you what we're doing and put up the landscape proposals um, and as, as i say we're happy to take some feedback on that some of it will be tied because the planning authority will say you've got to do x y and z some of it will have a bit more scope on but we're happy to share that what the proposal is so you can see that in a bit more detail that might help answer some of your question that's great thank you ben um i'm going to take the next two together because I, I it looks like they're related um so this is referring um to the uh, submission of details required by condition 43 um in this report it says that the football pitch will be out of action for longer maybe 62 weeks can you just confirm that that isn't the case um ian is that something i can bring you in for that or daryl i can come into that yeah um so that is a worst case um the plan at the moment is to reuse the turf so cut the cut the existing turf um install the drainage um and then lay the existing turf um if that doesn't go well then there could be a, a delay in terms of having to reseed the pitch but 62 weeks is a worst case um within that report which has come from the consultant um so that's that's the answer to that one okay thank you for that daryl um back to buck and street now will the buck and street neighborhood center open again um it's being used as many people will know as the central redistribution food hub at the moment so it, it's closed are there any plans to move the hub and reopen the center i'll, I'll answer this one um, so we have repurposed Buckingham Street during the current um, pandemic crisis for the city as um, a hub to distribute food and to provide a, a coordination hub for the food charities in the city to support our emergency planning efforts. Um, obviously, at this point in time, we're not quite sure when the government's going to tell us that we can open community buildings again. Um, but the plan is that we are looking for a more permanent home for the food charities in Cambridge City at the moment. We're working very closely with all the charities um, and we will open Buckham Street Neighbourhood Centre as a community facility again when we're able to, when the government advice on COVID changes and allows us to do that safely. That's great. Thanks, Alison. Um, so the next question is about the skate ramp. Um, I find it hard to believe that you're taking away the skate ramp during a lockdown um, pandemic. Can't you wait? Uh, if I start to answer that, the, 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 the skate ramps in an area that we do have to move when we hoard. So that's that's one thing. And, and one of the problems is if we move this type of kit, um, it has to go through a risk assessment. And if it doesn't pass that risk assessment, then unfortunately we're, we're not allowed to use it again. So um, if we can move it and relocate it and it passes the risk assessment, then we'll, we'll, we'll try that. But that is a, a, that's a department of the council that 
takes that decision so we can't just leave it and and what and be hoarded round so that's that's what we've said about that i think Dowell, is is there anything more to add on that is that pretty much the situation no that's pretty much it ben yeah um, we, okay, obviously need to make, we obviously need to make sure that it's safe as well so yeah Right, and I know there were concerns raised about the um, condition of it anyway, so what it's going to be replaced with will be a great improvement from what I understand. Yeah. Um, so the next question is about keeping residents informed. Will notices, and this is a this really important point actually, will notices be easy to read for people with learning disabilities and for people who speak other languages. I know we have a fair, a few number of people who do um, in Kings Hedges and Arbury. We, we always um, try to work through our sort of community organisations to reach as many people as we can in the right way with different messages at the right time. Um, so if, if we, yeah, we will make sure that we um, reach as many people in as many different ways as we possibly can and that communication will um, enable that to happen so yes we can offer translation of things if that's required um, or to make sure it, it, it meets particular disability needs in terms of size of fonts and things as well so yes we will make sure of that great thank you um, the next question is from Lucy are you going to replace the protected green space you're taking somewhere nearby if not why not um, as I understand it, Buckham Street, um, some of the green space being added there it is new green space. Is that right? Yes, that's 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 correct. And um, the you know, in order to put this planning submission in, we had to justify um, using up the eight percent of of the green space. And um, one of the justifications was that we were creating a new green space at Buckham Street which is the it's a nice village green actually um, and don't forget there will be green roofs which although not necessarily can be used by the public will certainly be used by nature. Okay thank you very much for that. I think we've answered the next question about the, up, the upper floor of the new Meadows Hub will have lift access won't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Um, the next one's about transport links. Will Stagecoach be approached for the idea of having both the Meadows and Buckham Street service with bus stops? Um, and this person, uh, Simon, is quite right. I remember years ago, I think it was number six, used to go past the Meadows. Is that something we've spoken to Stagecoach about? Um, I, I'll try and answer that. I don't, I don't think we have, but we can certainly raise it. I mean, it's part of our uh, submission. Um, would have to, it relies uh, on the the fact that we've got public transport close by. There's the um, the, the busway and so on. So uh, there would have been some representation to transport, but we can we can bring that up certainly from a council perspective. I'm happy, or Jake and I will will bring that up and see um, if we can meet them and and have a look at that. I can't guarantee that they will change their service, but it's certainly something we can bring up. Right. No, that would be good. I know when we looked um, for food cycle at using the Meadows Centre some years ago, that the main sticking point was uh, transport access and that guests wouldn't be able to get there easily. Um, so that's encouraging to hear. Thank you. Um, the next question is following on um, from the earlier questions about disability access. Um, thanking you for the answers. Um, it's asking for clarification on how you will help people with disabilities to check the architecture to ensure it actually works in practice. I can leave part of this to be answered by Ben in terms of the sort of building regs requirements and all the policy side of ensuring compliance with um, disability requirements as part of the architect's process for designing the centre. But in addition to that, we have done all, a lot of consultation work with specific groups around their particular needs as well um, for using this new hub building too. Um, so we know, for example, that um, the MS group need um, a support rail, for example, to be able to stand up and do some of their classes. So we've tried to integrate these kind of features in, um, which aren't necessarily requirements from the planning and building regs process, but are particular needs from specific groups. So we've done both of those both of those things. I'll let Ben answer on the um, the architects. 
yeah I, I don't know if it, can everyone hear me okay um yeah that's good uh yes yeah, so so what we do is provide a brief to to hill and the architects and um our brief is very very clear it's got to have disability access where we um not only just comply and, and cambridge have a very good um uh, policy on accessibility Have we lost ben? and disability access ensure that that our doors and it's also about trying to um make it work in 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 practice um and for the houses just just as an example we do liaise with the occupational therapist uh at the council to make sure that uh, people are getting the houses and flats that that work for people with disabilities uh, in that as well so that's, a, that's something we're, we're very strong on and actually hill are very good at delivering that as well and that's great thank you um the next question is about the football pitch the condition of the football pitch is not in a fit state to be used again it's not a state-of-the-art football pitch do sports england agree with this um they i'm gonna i'm just gonna link this to um a question at the end as well from helen um it looks like there's a little bit of disagreement um, on the state of the football pitch and um, Helen is saying the pitch doesn't actually need additional drainage um, and it's the only stretch of grass in Cambridgeshire that isn't a quagmire at the moment. Can you tell us a bit more about the football pitch and sort of how shall we I develop? start Dowell and then hand yes yep. shall I start Dowell and hand over to you do you want to come in here or are you okay for me to start yep you can go yeah yeah um uh, you know the football pitch as it stands um i call it an angle breaker because it is undulating and it's all over the place and i would not like to play football on it um so there has to be engagement with sports england on on standards they set the standards on the size and what 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 the football pitch is so what Dowell does is he has to go and, and get the design from Sports England and make sure it complies. And Sports England have been very clear that it needs drainage. Um, and then there's other consultants that feed into that. So the idea is that we'll get a much better football pitch as a result of the drainage and as a result of leveling it out as a result of reseeding and returfing as required. So that's, that's Dowell's remit to make sure that happens. Um, we can't do anything without, you know, Sports England agreeing in, in terms of that. So that's part of the remit. Is that right, Darrell? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. So we, we obviously have a consultant on board um, who provides a report to submit for the pre-commencement condition. Um, and at that point, we expect comments back from Sports England um, for them to get involved in the scheme as well, which they will then obviously provide comments on the report that we've provided. Um, Obviously, they, that will go into discussions about regrading, re-turfing, if the turf there is, is acceptable to reuse. It, it goes into whole elements of, of items to make sure that the pitch that we're providing is, is up to scratch. That's great. Thank you. Um, we've got another comment, uh, a question from Annette about the number six bus. I think we've covered that probably. Um, Annette, yes, I remember the number six bus well. I used to catch it myself. Um, and we will follow that up, Ben, won't we, with um, with Stagecoach and see what we can do. Um, and we just have another uh, observation um, about the six storey um, building um, and expressing concerns about that. But that isn't a question. So I think we can put that in the answered box. Um, that is all our questions. We do have about five minutes left. Do we have any further questions from the floor? If you do, if you can just type them in. Okay, so um, we have uh, another question, well, a statement and a question um, from Richard College uh, saying, I feel that this meeting has been very unsatisfactory because I feel we haven't been heard or seen. Why couldn't we ask our own question? Um, I'll start off, I think, with answering this. Um, it was a question I asked myself about the format of the of the meeting. And we know we, we, we were concerned that we were going to get 
mm -hmm. knew we would get a lot of questions. Um, we only have an hour to get through this, uh, through all the questions uh, with as full answers as possible. Um, and with the meeting being online, this was the um, most efficient way of doing this. Um, you can obviously, as we've said, you can submit further questions afterwards. Following um, all the follow-up residents engagement meetings, we are going to try and make those face-to-face -face when we can. But at the moment, we just don't know when that's going to be. Um, ben, did you want to follow up on any of that? Yes. Um, ideally, we'd all be meeting uh, physically uh, in, a, in, a, in a church hall or in a community centre, wherever that may be. And um, you do lose a bit by it not being physical we, we completely understand that but um, we're trying to be uh, as open as we can so if there are further questions you know you might have 10 more questions we are happy to answer them me and Jake will type up the answers so you've got answers to that um, you've got email addresses there if you want to contact the council direct or um, you've got a query when construction starts so you know, this is this is not the end. This is the beginning of uh, lots of dialogue that will carry on for the next three to four years. And I, I hope you will see us um, as, as considerate constructors, um, a, a, a council that wants to be open and answer swiftly and carefully and um, answers all your questions there. Um, We've suddenly got a lot of questions on there, but we're happy to answer all of them um, uh, as 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 we go along. So if if you if you send them on till Friday, we we can answer them bit by bit, um, and we'll put them live on the website. I hope that's okay. That's great. Thanks, Ben. Um, a comment from Simon. Thank you for that. Um, we have a question from Lillian. We haven't heard anything yet about cycle parking. Could you mention about that at, at both sites if possible, please? Yeah, I think Daryl's probably got a handle on the figures for this one. Yeah, so there, there's designated cycle parking within each block, um, which will allow for a, a cycle parking space for, I believe, each, each flat. Um, plus more. There's also external park, uh, cycle parking spaces as well for the community hub and also dotted around both sites um, for people to, to look up their bikes externally as well when they're visiting the hub or visiting the cafe and the, the uh, retail units. That's great, thank you. Um, so we have another question from Lucy. Can you ensure that the residents closest to the development are kept informed with adequate notice for, for a response, please. And I know when we met this week, I raised a couple of questions about Daisy Close and nearby houses. Yes, so we, I will liaise, or Jake will liaise with Hill on the delivery of the, the newsletters. As I say, they go to the nearest streets. So there'll be four or five streets it will go to, uh, and we will look at what the you know to ensure that the immediate streets um, get that newsletter now you know we'll put them up on the notice boards externally so people can see them um, and we hope that is adequate enough for people to, to look at if we need to do it a little bit wider then then we can look at that but there's a fine balance there um, in making sure we get the notices out but um, we as the council are available uh, if you've got questions and if it's the, the Lucy I know, then you, you know you can email me and I try and keep you informed as well of um, anything that's going on in relation to the, to the development and I'll continue to do so. That's great. Thank you, Ben. Um, we yeah, just, mm, I, th I think Helen's comment um, about uh, a live meeting rather than face to face, perhaps that's something that we could follow up between us afterwards just to see how the sort of technology for the next meeting might work. Um, thanks, Lucy, for that. So we are at seven o'clock now. Um, I can't see any more questions. So I'm going to thank you all very much for coming along and, and for plenty of really good questions. Thank you for those. In terms of next steps, just to remind you that you can submit additional questions by Friday, this Friday at five. And that is by emailing simon.aslit, 
A-S-L-E-T-T at cambridge.gov.uk. A full list of questions and answers will be put on the website. And the next residence engagement meeting, as we said, we are aiming for the end of June this year. Um, in the meantime, as Ben has said, you know, any queries or any questions, you can, can contact him. And of course, you can always contact your local councillors as well. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a pleasant rest of your evening.